Hi all, welcome to Balkan Shipyards. So the guys next door are chopping wood for the winter because the winter's coming, so ignore ignore the noise. The bam bam. Let's talk business, okay guys? Let's talk boat design. Balkan style. Okay? That's the Avaya 30, 25, plus one force. She got a leap pod on her. We'll talk about flat bottoms. We'll talk about lee pod, talk about rig, we'll talk about the model, we'll mention the armor. Let's get in the boat guys. So here's the lee pod, that's a wing and a half eh. So two slingers on the bottom, toughening up that 5mm ply. The whole lee pod is 5mm, a lot of truss work inside and this thing is tough. Okay, I trust this leap pod. It's gonna save. Told you the guys are chopping wood. So yeah, we'll ignore them. Okay, let's get inside. So the boat's all painted inside. She's ready to go. I'm decking tomorrow. There's the deck pieces. So I said I'll make a final word of what, what's going down over here. And uh, tomorrow I close her up. So this will be the end of the end. Okay. No shoes aboard. So let me... Opa, yeah, here we go. Okay, everything's painted, everything's ready to go. Flat bottoms, what's the deal with flat bottoms? So, everybody's going on about flat bottoms are not good, blah blah, whatever, mate. Flat bottom gives you less draft, more volume, and more headroom you get more headroom okay I mean if I got a V bottom at the bottom then I gotta have a fake floor on top of that and I'm losing all that V in headroom this is a huge boat that's the biggest advantage of flat bottoms and that's why I've always used flat bottoms because they give me headroom they give me volume they give me less draft I mean <laughs> I mean flat bottom okay so that's my post boxes, charts going here because we like navigating on paper. We like navigating the way the navigators used to navigate. Just work in here, so a few clothes over here and stuff. So here's the bunk, so we're going to have a piece of ply that comes down over here. And this piece of ply is going to be my chart plotter. Why? Because on the underneath of him, I will put my chart on so I can sit over here on my bucket or my head but I won't be on my head I'll be on my bucket which is my head and I'll be navigating on my chart which is under my bunk and then a the bunk comes down and the charts underneath storage uh, water gear tools whatever so it's gonna get hinged over here I'm gonna use my seat belt hinges I love seat belt hinges just pieces of seat belt screw down, screw down, and it's the best hinge in the world. You don't need hinges. Why do you need hinges? Stainless steel, all these fancy hinges, they just cost money. It's all about saving cash over here, people. Okay, so 12 mil bulkhead, I've blown holes in it. I've spoken about this earlier. Here's my little steps, I love them. This this is a light boat. At the moment, this boat is it's about it's under 100 kilos. Me and my bud, we picked up this boat piece of cake. He said he thinks he picked up only 40 kilos. And I was on the other end picking up the same like him. So we're under 100 kilos at the moment, okay? We'll speak about that uh, also once I get uh, outside of here. So, yeah, so there's a hatch to be made for this thing. Here's the main hatch above me. And this is the deck. I've been thinking about every single gram over here. I've really put an effort into making this a light boat. Crystal clear was very heavy. She was overweight. This is a light boat. This thing will move. It's not about moving as much as it's about load capacity. I've got 800 liters of volume on a 24 something foot boat. Pro which is a 1 to 10 beam length ratio. I'm doing good, you know. At a 1 to 10, I've got 800 liters 
yeah? And my windage is down to nothing. I've got, I've got 12 percent of windage. We'll go outside, I'll show you what windage is. This hull at the moment is 120 high, okay? If I take off 45, yeah, that leaves me 75 top sides above water, above sea level. 75 centimeters is exactly 12 percent of 6 meter 20, okay? So that's very really low windage and that's very really important for me to know that I have a boat that will get me off a lee shore and take me to windward with a, with a junk rig that is cambered panel, pretty high aspect, okay, and a big dagger. And that's what I always think about uh, windward ability. I think that for a vessel to be safe, she must be able to do minimum 60 to windward. I'll be the make or break, he does 50 to windward. 50 with leeway, 55. This one, she'll do better than that. She'll do 55, easy, including leeway. So I can get off any leash show I want. That's very really important stuff for me. So it's the rake of the bows, eh? I really like it. And my second pro, why not? I had really almost plumb bows and, all, and no flare at all. He used to go through waves and he would not come up. He was just, no. And then make a break up there. Look at the, I mean, look, there's tons of flare and good rake. These bows rise to everything. They smash through waves big time, but they always rise. I really like this boat. Okay, big ass dagger, 3% on my sail area. My sail area is 20 square meters. He has my junk leg, cambered panel, 5 panel junk sail. He has the Avaya 30. Uh, this is a this is a low aspect compared to what came out of here, which is a higher aspect, which I'm much happier with this sail. It's a 20 square meter and this thing will go to windward. It's good. It's a, it's a good high aspect ratio rig. It's really nice. Um, okay, so on Avaya 30, uh, 9 meter Vaca, I put my CE way ahead. I didn't know. I, I didn't know what I was doing over here until I lashanked why not last year and I took him for a sail and he had Lee Helm. He see he was too, uh, too much ahead compared to make or break over here. The same rig on two different boats, okay? And I learned that after very close uh, can't find the word, but uh, looking at stuff, you know what I mean? I found that on Make or Break, it's about 5% lead, CE lead on over midship. About 5. So if we are put it on to 7 on this hull because the good thing about junk legs is so let's say 7 would be somewhere here the this boat's flying a hull at the moment so let's say so that's the yard I call that the yard and I call this one the mast the reason is because a yard is a, is, is a, is a spar that's holding your sail but it moves it's not fixed to deck okay so this is a spar that's fixed to deck so this would be the mast say and this would be the yard so over here the yard has to move back to somewhere over there and then I have a lead of 7% because if it's too much, all I have to do is tighten the luff paddle of the junk leg and the sail moves back. And, and for me to move back, that's all I have to do, eh? Just tighten it and it moves like this. I mean, I can't move it over here, but you know what I mean. 
if I want to get over 6.2 meter waterline. I've, I've said uh, in a previous video I made a mistake on my waterline. I said 6.7 or something. Forget numbers. It's 6.2 meter waterline of both the hulls. Roughly. It's the same waterline on Ama and Vaka. 6.2. If I want to move it back 5 to 5% 5 from 7, which is 2% back, all I have to do is go back 13 centimeters. My junk rig, I just have to tighten the left paddle and he will go back 13 centimeters piece of cake. So I prefer him having a little bit more forward. So I'll put him at plus 7. CE over midship. 7% water line ahead. Okay? And if I have to go back to 5, if I have Lee Helm, I just pull the paddle, it will take me a minute at sea. I adjust my rig, I bring it slightly aft, and I get my weather helm that I want, okay? So that's, uh, so that's why I'm working on it like this, and I'm so happy that... Because I designed this model before I, before I loshanked uh, Why Not, my second pro. And then I found that I had... Uh, Lee Helm on him, so then I changed stuff onto here. And over here I know already exactly where my yard is coming. It's going to come bang on here. At 1 meter 50 for midship, and that will give me a 7% lead. And if I have to go back, like I said, piece of cake. So what's the deal? Flat bottom, blah blah blah. Just, guys. Boat design is freestyle, okay? Boat design is whatever you want to do as long as everything balances. You don't have to listen to all these geniuses on the net and you don't have to take on whatever everybody says and just design a boat the way you feel a boat should be as long as you understand boat design and you understand that everything must balance. This is my fourth build, eh? So yeah, I messed up a lot on the way, okay? But it wasn't never, never it was the flat bottom was the problem, never it was anything else was the problem. The problem was that you just don't know what you're doing, kind of, you know, so, <laughs> so you learn the hard way. So, so there, I mean, that's her, nice wing, eh? And uh, I'm very happy with this boat because you know what I'm happiest about the West, the best in the West I'm happiest about? That at the moment, at the moment, I'm 1,200 euro into this build and I have all the fiber gloss I need. I have all the plywood I need. I have almost all the paint I need. I have almost all the epoxy I need. And I have all the lumber I need for making acres and spars and whatever I need. Okay? So, this is 1,200 euro because it's popular ply, the strongest ply in the world per weight, which rots at the rate of roughly okume. So why would you use okume? I've spoken about this 5,000 times. I mean okume. I don't understand that stuff. If I was boss of the world, I would ban okume from uh, marine ply. It rots. So how can Okume be in the list of marine ply? So if Okume can be there, then poplar ply can be there too. We'll fiber gloss this boat all over from the outside. No gloss on the inside except for the floor. The whole bottom of this boat has been glossed inside. Okay? Because water has, water has this, uh, it tends to go down. So if it comes in, then it goes down to the bottom. So since it goes down to the bottom, then the floor can be glassed, okay? And the floor can be changed. I think that there might be a problem with glassing both sides. You're enhancing rot because you, you, uh, you're making it impossible for the, for the plywood to dry, okay? The, the, the moisture that has got in can't really get out. I think it's, it might be better to gloss only outside and leave it only painted inside and therefore it's easier for the moisture to get out once you winterize your boat and once you take your boat out of the water then it can dry slightly easier, you know what I'm saying? 
So the floor I've gone two sides to, to you know to to stiffen it up and to and to you know make it more resistant and make it more waterproof. But all the rest is just painted. Saving money and saving weight. Weight is everything on a multi hull. Weight is everything. And uh, it's something that I've been doing the best I can in bringing it as down as we can go. So 1200 euro on this uh, build is uh, really good. That means that I will be done at under 3000 euro with a brand new three and a half horsepower engine. Okay? That's included in the materials. I think you can't go cheaper than that. Okay? The engine itself is going to be about 800 euro. So that means that this boat, this, this boat, the total build in materials is 2,000 euro. 2,000 euro, all, everything, all included. Rigging the lot, okay? At the moment I'm at 1,200, so add on another 800 for an engine that puts me at two and I'm giving myself another thousand for everything I need. I'll, I'll, I'll fit into a thousand definitely. That's it guys. Uh, the Avaya 3025 Pro I one Force from Balkan Shipyard. It's freestyle bird design. Uh, Pro number four. And uh, yeah guys, it's just freestyle. I mean if you want to build a boat, just build a boat. Keep shunting people. The forces with you. Balkan shipyards. All the best.